welcome to this Black Fen broadcast on globalisation. I want you to think about some of the things you've bought lately. A new shirt, an iPod, trainers or food, bananas or even chocolate. You can be pretty sure that most of those products have come from somewhere outside of Britain. Okay? Now, your shirt might have been made in India, your iPod put together in China, and your trainers are from Indonesia, bananas from the Caribbean and chocolate from Ghana. We live in a world today that is completely connected, and it's not just by the products we buy. You may listen to American music, fly in Dubai Airways, um, or travel to the other side of the world. So the way the whole world is connected is called globalisation. Now, there are obviously some good things about globalisation. We get to enjoy and share things from all over the world. We also get to buy things from other parts of the world at a relatively cheap price. And we know so much more about what's going on on the other side of the world so we can help other people out. That was the idea behind the Kony 2012 campaign. The problem is that there's also a downside to globalisation. The things we buy from other countries are often quite cheap because the companies that make these products can make them quite cheaply because they don't pay the workers very much. And the downside of being able to fly anywhere in the world is that the pollution from aeroplanes is damaging our environment. And just because you know someone on the other side of the world is suffering, it doesn't mean you're going to do anything about it. Now some people argue that's okay. They believe in something called free trade. Free trade is when countries do business with each other without many or any rules telling them how much they have to pay their workers or how well they have to look after them. The problem is that poorer countries are sometimes reluctant to make these types of laws too strict. Why? Well, because globalisation means that companies can set up businesses anywhere in the world. So if a country starts making strict laws and enforcing them, these companies might decide to leave and find a different country where the laws are not so strict and they can get away with paying workers a very low wage or running a business that damages the environment. This is sometimes called the race to the bottom. Now we said that free trade is when there are little or no rules or restrictions about how countries do business with each other. Some people say that this allows for a very efficient economic system where anyone can do business anywhere and in any way. Other people say that free trade just means that the richest countries benefit while the poorest countries lose out. To stop this happening and to make sure that globalisation benefits everyone, an organisation called the World Trade Organisation, or WTO, was set up. The WTO is an organisation that sets the rules for world trade. Most countries in the world are members of the WTO. In theory, every country that is a member of the WTO is treated equally. Decisions are made on the basis that each country has one vote. However, there is a small problem. This system means that it's very hard to reach an agreement. Furthermore, the rich countries tend to have far more influence at these meetings, partly because the discussions are very complex and they tend to have many more aspects in the world trade to support them. As a result, the rules that are agreed by the WTO do not always seem very fair. For example, countries in Europe used to give farmers from small islands in the Caribbean some economic benefits, which made it easier for them to sell bananas to Europe. The reason they did this was because many years ago, countries like Britain and France ruled many of these Caribbean islands. But the WTO has passed a law saying that these European countries should not and cannot support the Caribbean farmers in this way, because it's unfair to other farmers in other countries. Of course, the other farmers they are talking about are huge international banana companies like Chiquita and Del Monte. Now, there is no way in the world the small farms in the Caribbean can compete with giant companies and the vast farms they run. Even worse, it's been shown that these huge farms do not treat their workers fairly and use very strong chemicals to help the bananas grow quick, quickly. So it just doesn't seem very fair. Because of this, many people have protested against organisations like the WTO because they don't think they are fair to poorer countries. These protests have become known as anti-globalisation protests. Now, there is a way to do business that treats workers and the environment in a way that is fairer. It's called fair trade. A good example of fair trade is the cocoa industry in Ghana. Cocoa is the raw ingredients that is needed to make chocolate. 
Some cocoa farmers in Ghana are part of a group that sells their cocoa to a fair trade company in the UK. This means they get a fair price for their cocoa and a little extra which goes towards improving their community. Of course, that does mean that fair trade chocolate in this country will cost a little bit more. So the question is, would you be willing to pay a little more for your chocolate if you knew the people who made it were going to get a fairer price for it? And so, there are obviously pros and cons of globalisation. The only thing for sure is that it is here to stay.